U.S. military support has been intensifying its fight against al-Qaeda in Yemen. Al-Qaeda in Yemen took responsibility for the attempted attack on Northwest Airlines Flight 253. It said the attempt was in retaliation for U.S. strikes there, strikes they could see a lot more of in the near future. Barbara Starr has the latest on what could be a new crackdown against al-Qaeda. Yemeni forces earlier this month on a raid against al-Qaeda just north of the capital of Sana'a. The military shouts, come out, it is better for you, do not be afraid. Shots are fired, several suspects are finally captured. This was one of Yemen's efforts to hit back at al-Qaeda, U.S. assistance with several recent strikes that may have killed some of these men is now openly acknowledged. These are Yemeni armed forces attacks. So, uh, they were, uh, of course, uh, uh, supported by American intelligence and uh, by the training of the Yemeni armed forces. What's next? The U.S. military and intelligence community are looking at everything they've got on al-Qaeda in Yemen. Strikes are expected to continue and could involve U.S. missiles or aircraft, sources say. The U.S. and Yemen are looking for targets linked to the attack on Northwest Flight 253. But direct retaliation hasn't always worked. Our target was terror. Our mission was clear. There will be no sanctuary for terrorists. In 1998, after al-Qaeda attacked U.S. embassies in East Africa, President Clinton ordered cruise missile attacks against targets in Afghanistan. But al-Qaeda was untouched. Key operatives had long fled the area. U.S. retaliation that worked? It happened in Yemen back in 2002. A U.S. drone fired a missile. One of the dead was an al-Qaeda operative believed to have been behind the October 2000 attack on the Navy warship Coal in Yemen that killed 17 sailors. Even now, the U.S. is continuing to provide weapons, training, and intelligence to the Yemeni military. But if President Obama, John, decides at any point to launch a retaliation strike for this latest airliner incident, the military will have a target list ready for him. John. Barbara Star Force at the Pentagon tonight. Barbara, thanks. Barbara Bodine has a real understanding of the threat posed by al-Qaeda in Yemen. She was the U.S. ambassador to Yemen from 1997 to 2001. During her service there, the USS Cole was attacked by al-Qaeda extremists while at anchor in the port of Aden. 17 members of the Cole's crew were killed and the ship heavily damaged. Ambassador Bodine joins us now. Ambassador Bodine, are you surprised at all that Umar Farouk Abdulmutallab came through Yemen? Uh, yeah, a little. Um, he is a Nigerian. It isn't the, the, the normal place that you would expect him to be going. On the same token, you know, a lot of people do go through Yemen. Um, and uh, it is a major area of uh, mm -hmm. al-Qaeda warehousing. Um, uh, the imam is there, who is, you had it in one of your setup pieces, mm -hmm. is quite an inspirational leader. So surprised, uh, astounded, no. Um, somewhat surprised, yes, uh, right. but it's not wholly unusual. Is, is, is Yemen in danger of becoming a failed state, much like Afghanistan was? Many, some people believe it is already a failed state. No, I don't think that Yemen is a failed state yet. Uh, Yemen has been described by some of its friends as the always almost failing state. Mm -hmm. uh, it is on a failure curve. It has some extraordinary problems in terms of resources, poverty, uh, a demographic uh, boom. Um, and it just simply doesn't have the resources to, to be a, an utterly successful state. It doesn't have to fail, and it isn't on the brink of failure. Um, it could reach a tipping point, however, and some missteps by either their government or by ours could force them over the edge. And, and, and when we talk about those steps, at, at, at present, the U.S. military is assisting Yemeni forces in counterterrorism training. Is uh -huh. the U.S. approaching the problem in Yemen the, the right way? Um, in, the, in regards to our support on counterterrorism training and providing equipment, uh, yes, I think that's the right thing to be doing. I think where we run a risk of not doing it properly is not opening up the aperture enough to include uh, development assistance, governance assistance, um, the full range of support that this country needs to stay ahead of the failure curve. Mm -hmm. um, if we focus solely on trying to get Al-Qaeda, uh, while that is a very uh, 
valid goal of ours, if that's the only thing we do, then the rest of the indicators on Yemen will continue to slide backwards. And in the long run, we'll, we'll end up behind instead of ahead. Should, should the United States, do you think, launch preemptive military strikes against al-Qaeda targets in, in Yemen? You know, it, after the coal bombing, both the Clinton and Bush administrations were criticized for not launching strikes there in Yemen. Um, I, in your own setup piece, I think you, you, you indicated some of the, uh, the limits of these kinds of strikes. The intelligence that you need to have to hit the right people at the right time to have the effect that you're looking for is extraordinarily difficult. Um, we're not dealing with a failed state. There is a sovereign government there. It is a reasonably legitimate government. It is one that has cooperated with us, um, who has a similar concern on Al Qaeda. And what we need to do is, is be a little bit smarter on which tools we use. Let's use intelligence. Let's use law enforcement. Uh, let's use diplomacy and let's try to find these people and take care of them in a far more surgical style, if you like, than um, just a preemptive strike. We can't do a preemptive strike also in a vacuum. We don't know enough about Yemen. We don't know where these people are. We don't know what their support is. And so we need to learn a lot more before we just go in and strike. Barbara Bodie, the former U.S. ambassador to Yemen, uh, joining us tonight. Uh, ambassador, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.